Hey guys, welcome to my studio. Today I'm gonna show you six ways that you can fill this baby right here. We all have that sketchbook that we're trying to fill. Lack in inspiration sometimes. Maybe we just wanna have fun, yeah. These are the things that you can do to just kinda let loose, have some fun, maybe push yourself a little bit. So, no matter where you are, welcome. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Wix. Wix offers professional solutions for every need and it does all the heavy stuff for you. So you don't need to know HTML and you can build a professional website. Wix gives you complete creative freedom with endless possibilities. You can create whatever you want for free by yourself. Whether you need a website for personal use, you're building a business, or maybe you're trying to put together that art portfolio, you can do it here on Wix. Let me show you my website. So this is what the website editor looks like. It's very intuitive to change things. So I'm just changing background colors, doing some simple rearranging right now, and updating a couple pages. By the way, if you want to sign up for Wix to build your own website, go to www.wix.com slash go slash Mira Byler to get started. It is free. I will leave a link in the description. But yeah, I just changed some colors and I'm gonna change my about page. It's time to update those images. Wix is a great place for me to upload my art portfolio so I can send it to potential clients. If you are looking to build a website and you want some ideas, I encourage you to check out my website. I'll leave my website link below too. It's just mirabyler.com. Alrighty, let's get started on the sketchbook portion of the video now. By the way, if you have an art portfolio, let me know in the comments below. Alrighty, the first fun activity you can do to fill a page in your sketchbook is washi tape art. So you saw all those pretty colors I have. Well, I'm just drawing a portrait like I normally would in my sketchbook, except there's gonna be a twist to it. Instead of coloring everything and doing all that fancy shading, I am going to take a little shortcut and cover some areas with washi tape. So I have this X-Acto knife tool, except it's more of just a pointed thing. And it's a little dollar and I run it along the edges of my washi tape and boom, I can just cut it and peel it up. Super easy, I get out of some shading and everything looks so fancy afterwards. So if you want some inspiration, if you want to add some color to your pages, grab a roll of washi tape. And if you don't have any, a lot of times Michaels has it on clearance for like, I think I've gotten rolls for like 25 cents before. So keep your eye out, you can do it. Anyway, I am coloring in some areas just to make it pop and whoo, she has some botanical hair. Look how beautiful. All because of washi tape. And honestly, I just used some rolls that I had sitting around for over a year and it really brought this piece to life. I really love doing this. I got the idea from Casey Golden and now I'm like hooked on the washi tape art thing. It's really fun to just add those patterns to your pages. And by the way, I'm going to mention right now that you are more than welcome to do any of the ideas you see here. So if you want to do this exact project, but maybe different washi tape or something, go for it. Tag me on Instagram. Show me what you did. I love seeing your guys' artwork. Or just comment down below and let me know if you've ever done this before. And what did you draw? I want to know. <laughs> so I decided to add some accents around her with this colored pencil botanical wreath thing but all in all this whole project maybe took me 30 minutes that's how quick it is just laying down washi tape and just doing some minimal shading so here it is and that is the first idea if you don't feel like using color in your sketchbook, then this idea is for you. You'll really only need maybe a pencil and a pen that's laying around your house and draw something really simple. 
and maybe steer clear of backgrounds because this one is gonna take patience. So, if you feel like maybe watching Netflix or listening to a podcast, I would recommend you just turn something good on, something to feed your ears, and uh, draw something simple. I am drawing a sprig of lavender and just outlining it with my pen. And then, this is where it gets crazy, guys. We are doing stippling. And it's going to make a really cool vintage effect. It just takes a lot of patience. So stippling is shading with dots. You just do tons of dots. And where you want it to be darker, you do more dots. Where you want it to be lighter, you do less dots. It's just, it's really easy. It's hard to mess it up. It just takes so much patience. <laughs> That's why I'm like, hey, girl, you might want some Netflix for this or a podcast because it passes the time. But every time I do this in my sketchbook, I always look back and I'm like, wow, this looks so cool. And this was so fun. So here's my sprig of lavender and it's finished. This probably took me an hour. That's it. If you've seen any of my older videos with ideas to fill your sketchbook, you may have come across ideas that are very similar to this one, but themed patterns. So I'm a sucker for patterns on pages. I think they're so beautiful and they're really, really therapeutic. So this is what I'm doing for this one. I picked a color scheme and I decided to go with nautical colors, so like reds and blues. And I decided to fill my page with nautical things, so I'm doing like corals, seaweeds, fish, all that kind of stuff. I could have added like anchors and stuff, but I wanted to keep it more on the natural side of the nautical, so that's what we're doing. And I'm basically repeating all these simple silhouettes across my page. So I'm not doing shading, just silhouettes, and it looks really cool the more you add. So what I'm doing is for each specific thing, I'm only doing that in one color. So like you'll notice certain shapes of coral are only in red, other shapes are only in blue, and it creates some consistency and then when you look at it from far away, when it's done, it's like, whoa, this is a sweet looking pattern. I did this. So yeah, I would totally recommend it. If you are a beginner artist, this is a great project to make you feel like really proud of yourself. So if you need a little self-esteem boost, just saying this is your project right here. Just repeat a bunch of shapes, pick a really cool color scheme that you like a lot, and then like roll with it. So yeah, I did something really similar to this in another sketchbook video where I painted a bunch of blobs and then I filled them all in with different like Zentangle patterns. So this one essentially takes it a step further. It's a little more advanced, but really it doesn't matter what skill level you are, anybody can do this. It's super stress relieving, super therapeutic. So if you're feeling a little stressed out, I would definitely welcome you to do this. Let me know what kind of art you do when you are stressed out and let me know if you've ever done this before or maybe you plan to. This is what it looks like when it's done. You can pretty much stop at any point or you can even do more detail than this. Whatever you want, really. All right, the fourth thing you can do, if you have any stamps laying around your house or maybe you've made your own stamps before, a uh, shout out to this stamp, I actually carved it in a previous video. You can take these stamps, you can take leaves or just any fancy cool objects you feel like pressing to a page and experiment with different media on these. So right now I'm pressing everything with gouache, but now I'm taking these Ahuhu brush markers and coloring them and pressing them and they all leave different effects and that is so cool. So yeah, I just encourage you to experiment and toy around. You don't have to carve your own stamp if you don't want to, but you can if you want. And it adds some color to your pages. It's a very quick exercise, but I like to do this when I'm not proud of a couple pages in a row in my sketchbook. And then I'm like, oh, I need to like do something to encourage myself. 
get me inspired again and just cheer me up with something colorful and happy. I resort to this and yeah, it brightens the mood. It lets you have a little bit of fun with no pressure because you're literally just pressing objects to a page. You can even carve a potato and make a stamp, girl. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, it turns out really cool and you get to experiment. How cool. All right, guys, grab a magazine, grab a newspaper, whatever you have laying around. You're going to need it for the fifth one. And let me tell you what, this one is like my favorite one of this entire video. But cut out something that you feel like drawing and make sure it's something that you enjoy. So I took a Better Homes and Gardens magazine, clipped out some pastries, and what you're doing is you're gonna cut that picture in half like I did, and you're gonna draw the other side. So this really challenges you to expand your skills in realism, or maybe if you're doing this with an illustration, you have to take on the style of whatever that picture is. And the goal here is to try to make your half look exactly consistent with the magazine or newspaper clipping page. It is so fun because it really pushes you to like keep adding details, see how far you can take it. And then at the end, when you're all finished, it's like sometimes it's really, really hard to tell which half is which. And sometimes it actually ends up being quite humorous because it's like hard to match it. So I definitely recommend that you try this. I did this in high school art class once, completely forgot about it until a couple months ago. And then I was like, oh my word, I need to do this again. So now I'm hooked on it again and I think it's so fun. Let me know if you've ever done this in the comments. Um, I, I really like it. If you do this, something I'm going to recommend to you is to show it to somebody you know and have them guess which side you drew and which side is the magazine or newspaper. I just think this one is so fun and I'm really glad that I was able to draw food. I found a food one. <laughs> I really like the Better Homes and Gardens magazines though because cooking is fun. This exercise is really fun because it does push you to keep going the extra mile because you can kind of tell when you compare it to the magazine like that you need to go further. So I definitely recommend this. I started with watercolor and then I layered some colored pencil over top and then I'm doing some final details with gouache. So you can, you can get fancy, do a bunch of different mediums. Whatever floats your boat. So here's mine and boom, magazine, mine, magazine, mine. Do a little comparison, yeah. The last idea I'm gonna leave you with is something you all have probably heard of before, especially if you follow artists on Instagram, but it is the Meet the Artist Challenge. So I guess it's not really a challenge, but I definitely recommend it. And I think it's really fun to put this in your sketchbook because you can look back at it later and see how you changed, and you can see how your art changes. So I like to do just simple cartoony art for these little things, but I think they're really fun. Basically what you write is like your name. You can write your height and stuff like that if you want. I don't because I'm lazy, but you also write like your likes, your dislikes, what's in your art bag, maybe what you carry in your purse if you use a purse. You can really do whatever you want with it. You can add or subtract elements as well. So I'm drawing a cartoon version of myself, what I would normally wear, and then I'm just writing different things I like and I don't like, and then I think it's cool. It's like a time capsule on a page. So later, I'm obviously gonna enjoy looking back at this and seeing if my likes and dislikes have changed over time. Anyway, I definitely recommend that. Sorry I only left you with six ideas today. I felt like these ones were more in depth than my usual suggestions. If you want more sketchbook videos though, let me know in the comments and I will work on another one. Have a wonderful day and I hope these helped you. Bye!